Hey guys, Eugene Cousins here. Welcome back to the channel. All right, so today we're going to be talking about three different effects that you need to be knowledgeable about that so that you can identify them. Most importantly, uh, need to know how to avoid them or corrective action to take uh, in case that uh, they uh, that you experience them. So the first one is torque roll. So that is the cage twisting on your back every time that you apply throttle. So the harder you go onto the throttle, the more that machine is going to rock uh, on your back is going to roll over. So if it's an anti-clockwise turning propeller, which is most, then the frame is going to be twisting in the opposite direction. Why does that happen? Well, basically, it's the engine laboring to turn the propeller over. And the, the harder it is to pull this, push this propeller over in the anti-clockwise direction, the more that engine is going to be twisting. So uh, propeller weight is determined by how many propellers or isn't that set? So if you've got a, a three blade, it's going to be heavier than a two blade. Um, the length of the propeller. So it, the, obviously, if you fly a 150 centimeter propeller instead of a 125 centimeter propeller, there's going to be more torque present with that heavier propeller that needs to be pushed over. Also, the inertia of uh, the, the prop set, the, the drag of the blades, all of these elements uh, come into play in how much how much it takes out of that engine to turn it over. The pitch of the propeller, so what kind of propeller you are flying, also determines how much torque is going to be present. So if you're used to a certain blade that is, for example, got a thinner pitch running a higher RPM, that will induce less um, torque then the same the same engine with a different propeller that's got a deeper pitch why would there be propellers with deeper pitches so within the nirvana family for example you get the green line propeller that's got a deep pitch we make that propeller because it runs lower rpm and it's more fuel efficient but it will induce more torque so by swapping out propellers you might change the torque effect of your your machine but you need to know what to do to counteract what is going to be the effect of torque in your flying so that you know need to so that you are able to apply corrective action so as you apply throttle and the cage is turning on your back you need to be a, you need to be uh, aware of the fact that that roll is twisting your swing arm connections as well. Your swing arms are connected to the risers of the wing, goes all the way up to the wing. So obviously with the riser now being pulled towards the right, you're going to have a right leaning moment, a right banking moment that comes into effect, especially as soon as you get off the ground, you're just going to turn towards the right. The less of an anti-torque system the machine has, so if it's got no anti-torque system uh, whatsoever, it's going to be more of a right banking moment than a machine that does have an anti-torque system present. Okay, so let's talk about the corrective action to take. As soon as you start banking towards the right, right you've got to apply a little bit of left brake and you apply the amount of brake that gets you to fly straight. You only want to turn when you want to turn, meaning that when you decide to turn. So a little bit of left brake will get you to fly straight. If you're going to continue in a straight line, then you can open the right trimmer a little bit and that will equalize the situation because the right side will now fly a little bit faster than the left and you will fly straight. So go back on this video and make notes on what I'm saying because I am going to go over this rather quick because we've got lots to cover. So a little bit of left brake or a little bit of right trim open will get you to fly straight. Now we're talking about anti-torque systems. Uh, an instructor that tells you that torque has no effect on the pilot is a bogus instructor. So having some form of anti-torque system present will be safer for the pilot at the end of the day. Now Nirvana has a physical, that's the first type, is a physical anti-torque system, which is a belt going from the right leg to the left shoulder, uh, connects onto the harness. And the reason why not everybody is using that is because it's a little bit of uh, anti-weight shift. And as we know, weight shift is a very popular thing these days. And so the belt is not on the menu for most manufacturers. So Nirvana, guys, you can disconnect the belt um, once you're airborne, once you're flying straight and level, and then you'll have a little bit more weight shift present. The second type, uh, se second type of design is the directing of the airflow. So I'm putting a picture up here of the Airfly 200 that's got these little paddles connected onto the struts. And so as the air flows over these struts, it pushes the frame in the opposite direction of 
the, the, the roll of the cage. So as you apply throttle, it's sucking air and that air is flowing over these paddles and it's pushing the frame in the opposite direction. It's most effective after you, you've applied your takeoff run and you actually got some positive airspeed. That's when it becomes most effective. And I really like this system because at the highest speeds where torque is most prevalent, um, you able to fly with less counter trim. So that's past the, the, the basic level and you're at experience level. You want to mitigate counter trim as much as possible because that actually affects your top speed at the end of the day. The third system that you'll find on swing arms, like something on like on the Parajet, is that they offset the hooking points on the swing arms. They offset it a little bit from one another, and that is their means or their way to counteract the trim. Now, there are other things mentioned in the, the manual um, that could be used for official marking purposes by saying that you can use a bigger uh, carabine on the one side than the other side to counteract the trim. Uh, to me, I don't even consider those because once you go off the throttle, torque is gone. So torque is RPM related to a large degree. So obviously I've spoken about the other things that is really important as well. So I don't, I don't work with those. I don't try and promote those systems or talk about them at all. It's, old, it's an old way of thinking. But the fourth one is, for, for me, is the most important. That is when the wing manufacturer brings in a anti-torque system. Now, Dedek, for example, calls it the TEA line, and that is basically breaking the wing on the side that will, um, as the roll happens, the side that will fly faster is getting braked by the TEA line. And that can be installed on either the right side or the left. So no matter whether you've got an anti-clockwise moving prop or a, a clockwise moving prop, you're able to install the TEA line to counteract the torque. And that by far, is the most effective system. It's not introduced into every wing type. It's mostly on the more advanced types of wings where it is um, where, where it can be installed. So to summarize, the first is the anti-torque belt. The second is the directional airflow that you find on a Nirvana, a Scout, or a McFly, for example. The third system is the, the connection points that are changed. So offset on the parajet or directional uh, skew arms like on the air conception, um, etc. There are various different swing arm designs that change because of that. And then the fourth system is the TEA line, which is built into the wing by far the most effective of any anti-torque system. All right, we're done with torque. We're moving on to the next point, which is gyroscopic precession. All right, there's an important reason why I've not shown the setup of swing arm equipment yet. Now, we've already done ground handling, etc., but we haven't actually done the setup of the swing arm sheet and those hook-in points. Uh, and it's because this subject is really relevant to understand before you do it. A good instructor will help you set up your equipment uh, from day one because the tilt of the motor hanging backwards is an incredibly important part of your equipment setup. And you being able to determine that is not such a simple thing. You need to be knowledgeable about that and the instructor will be able to tell you if the motor is tilting too far backwards or too far, too far forwards. You see, gyroscopic precession actually happens because you've got those hook-in points too far forward and so the motor is leaning too far back. And the way to determine that is during the setup part where we simulate the hanging. So you know, schools might have a bulkhead with a sim, what we call a simulator, that's risers hanging from the bulkhead. You winch the pilot up and he can simulate getting into his seat and what the hang point position would be like for him while whilst in flight. And then you can determine the hook in point if it should be moving a little bit closer to the pilot or a bit far further forward. But you don't want that, um, that tilt to be too far back. If it's too far back, you're going to have issues or you, you're exposing yourself to the risk of gyroscopic precession. Now, here's how gyroscopic precession plays out. The pilot looks like he knows what he's doing. He's getting to positive airspeed as he's running. He's pulling his wing up. His wing can, can come up 100% correct. He's running. He's going to full power, and he gets knocked off his feet in the takeoff run. And so now it's the hang position um, and the tilt backwards that comes into play. So if he stays on power with him going from upright to this position while being hard on the power, then gyroscopic precession will start yawing towards the left on the y-axis. Now that's how you identify the difference between gyroscopic precession and asymmetric blade thrust. 
gyroscopic precession is towards the left if it's a uh, anti-clockwise uh, moving propeller yawing towards the left and so the pilot could be facing the left wing tip of the wing and then the wing is going to be turning towards the right because as you yaw towards the left it's pulling on the right the riser is pulling on the right swing arm that'll bank the right wing tip and the the wing could collapse and the worst case scenario is that the pilot will just be doing a riser twist he'll be you know he'll, he'll be spinning around in circles while the wing is slowly banking towards the right or completely collapse but the I think the end result is the same, is that it will stall out of the air, the pilot will fall, just, just drop out of the air, and you, do, you want to absolutely avoid this type of situation. So corrective action, what do you do if you start feeling that while you're doing your takeoff run? Going on to max power, you feel the yaw coming into place, what do you do? You go off the throttle and you uh, abort the takeoff completely. If you're already airborne and you feel that yaw come into play, then you slowly go off the throttle. Now, whether you abort it and get back onto the ground or whether you continue depends on whether your takeoff site has an obstacle in front of it or not. If you've got to clear the obstacle, you're going to go off the power slowly so that it becomes corrective action and you're maintaining altitude to get over the obstacle. But if you do that and it's still, you, you, you're not able to maintain altitude and it's still yawing, then you're going to have to let go of the throttle and get into a glide that you could try and fly back down to the ground without using the engine. You've got to get off the engine power completely and that is where the instructor's input is really important. The instructor will never let you take off with an obstacle in front in the first place, but that is that's some of the considerations that you need to take. All right, so I'm gonna play this video that showcases what a gyroscopic precision looks like um, you know, as the pilot takes off, I want you to take, uh, you know, have a keen eye for the fact that it looks like he's doing everything right. His hands are up, he's, he's running, he's getting forward momentum, uh, he's getting to positive airspeed, his wing has come up real nicely. Um, but now as he goes to full throttle, he gets knocked off his feet, the machine lies in the, in, the, in the backwards tilt, and now it goes into that gyroscopic motion. And the wing actually tilted towards the right. Let's see if we can see that on the video. I'm pretty sure it does. Um, so you can see there, you see that, you see the wing there bangs towards the right and he's still yawing towards the left. So there we are, gyroscopic precision, class, classic textbook example. So that's gyroscopic precision, how to eliminate it, how to, um, how to avoid it. Remember, get that hook in points set up correctly. All right, last effect we're going to be talking about is asymmetric blade thrust. So think about a propeller in the horizontal position. Now, if you look at the propeller from the side, this would be the pitch. There will be some pitch in effect. And the reason why there's a pitch on the propeller is because the prop is trying to screw into the air. And so we call that the helix as the propeller screws into the air. And it's trying to get, you know, with that thrust, it's screwing into the air and it's getting you to have forward motion. Now, the, the angle of attack on both props, as seen from the side, both props have an angle of attack. That the one is sweeping downwards and the other one is moving upwards because they're talking about horizontal motion. So if I put a sketch up here, you'll see a little bit of a sketch looking at the engine from the back and see the one is a downward sloping prop or blade and the other one is an upward swinging prop or blade. Now, they both have the same angle of attack in horizontal flight. But if you're in a climb rate or you hit the brakes and you actually will induce a climb, the, 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 the thrust angle is no more upright. So if you look at the side of the paramotor, this is an upright position. Now, if you hit the brakes or you're in a climbing position, you can see the thrust angle is no longer upright. And now you've got a situation where the downward sweeping blade has got a higher angle of attack than the upward moving blade. Because it's moving at a faster speed and a longer distance, um, there's going to be more thrust produced by the downward sloping blade on your left so it's more thrust being produced by the left hand side and this is where the key comes in in the explanation if you're trying to identify gyroscopic precision it's a yaw towards the left and if you're trying to identify uh, asymmetric blade thrust it's a yaw towards the right but it's not severe it's not a severe situation you'll just feel a little bit of uh, yaw towards the right while your wing is still flying in a straight direction. 
Now, there, is, there are obvious ways to counteract it, but it's like I said, it's always uh, prevalent with RPM. So if you want to reduce that asymmetric blade thrust, just reduce the RPM and it'll dissipate. And you can counter trim uh, on your right hand side to move that wing a little bit towards the left um, and that will obviously uh, uh, reduce the whole situation on asymmetric blade thrust. But identifying one of those effects and knowing what um, uh, mitigating um, uh, conditions you can apply to it or, or steps you can apply to it, that would obviously solve the situation. All right, guys, uh, go into the comment section. If you need clarification, go in there, ask me questions. I will answer it. And then also I'm putting in two links. One is on gyroscopic precession. It's a little bit of a scientific video on it, so a bit more, yeah, a bit more science part of it. And then uh, asymmetric blade thrust, another link on that if you're interested in the topic. And then I'll be seeing you on the next one.